Our next guest has a very impressive resume that is about as long as a CBS receipt. Wow. Meet, Meet. Ellen Adair. Tell us. There we go. Uh, she's a non-binary actress who has starred in a multitude of television shows and movie projects, including the murder mystery thriller The Sinner mm -hmm. and award-winning high-stakes drama Homeland. Mm -hmm. Ellen's latest project brings her front and center as the leading character in the horror film that will have you holding your breath, uh. sleeping with the lights on, and peeking around every corner Ooh. like that. Where are you all been? We've been out camping. What happened to her? We need to get to the hospital. Hospital's no good. It's been overrun. You can trust me. Hey. Let me tell you something. She she wanted she couldn't wait to do this film. That was a preview of the new zombie horror movie Heard, which premiered internationally to a sold-out audience, mm -hmm. received a five-star review at UK Fright Fest last month ahead of its theatrical release this Friday. Without Ellen any Adair, further ado, joining us live right now with an inside scoop on all of that business that we just saw over there. The boils, holy moly. Oh yeah, it's real gross. I say that approvingly. I'm, gonna that's going to haunt my dreams tonight. I'm just this is I'm just putting it out there. I'm going to I'm you're going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to text you saying I didn't sleep because I had that guy's face in my dreams. It's spooky season. It is. It's rightfully spooky so. season. And I read that you couldn't wait to do this. This is like right up your alley. Oh boy. Yes. Yeah, I've done a number of horror films at this time and I feel like horror has this really interesting ability to offer escapism but also to say something else and I think that this film really does that right so it, it is action-packed it's a fun zombie film but I think that it's also really looking at our society and reflecting something mm. back to us and so when I read the script I think it's so well constructed all of the characters are really multi-layered and nuanced and so yeah I was uh, what I thought when I read the script was I would die to do this movie as long as I get to do the movie first and die afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did but there. But you know what? You just made me think about horror movies in a different way. You took the words right out of my mouth. Well, see, that's why I she's have good to, at watching I have to try she's watching it with a different listeners. head on, I guess. I think you're pretty good talkers, too. Well, well they don't want to hear us. They want to hear you. Now, we, we have to, we mentioned in the open several times that you identify as non-binary, and this all began in 2016. So we were wondering if you might be able to share your journey to this self-discovery identification that led us to this. Oh, sure, yeah. So, I mean, th it is relevant to this film because my character is a queer character in this okay. film, and it means a lot to me to get to tell a queer story. And for me, you know, I am I am of an age where growing up I didn't know about the the existence of a non-binary identity. And I certainly when I when I first met a non-binary person, my first thought was, oh well if I'd known that was an option, mm -hmm. that's what I would right. have been the whole time, was my like knee-jerk right. thought. <laughs> because I certainly spent a lot of time in my you know, kind of like early mid teen years being like, I don't I don't I don't want to be a woman. Yeah. Like and I just, because I think the interesting thing about gender is it's hard to imagine having a different relationship to your gender than a person does, right? I think that's one of the reasons it's, it's sort of a flashpoint is because people who have never had a thought like that in their life have a hard time imagining that somebody else isn't just like yeah. making it up. But for me, I was like, well, clearly nobody wants to be a woman and <laughs> well, everybody else it, is just make it hard for us. really uh, good at exactly. like, Right. making themselves into one so I had this thought like well I better like learn how to make myself into one if I want to be an actor right. um, so yeah it was really into like well into my professional acting career that I kind of made this realization and you know I have been working through honestly just to be frank about it like a lot of guilt I guess for for feeling like I I capitulated some part of myself and feeling like there are a lot of people in the queer community who I feel like I would rather uplift mm. rather than, than feeling like I'm trying to kind of shove myself into, and, into that spotlight. And don't you think you can do both? But I, th that's sort of what I've, what I've come to. Yeah. And I think particularly you know, with the rise of anti-trans vitriol, I felt like, well, perhaps by being more frank about my own experience with my gender, I can be a better ally to the people that 
who are who are more marginalized because like I'm aware I have a lot of like straight passing cis passing privilege and so yeah really it's just about um, having being visible and therefore having people be aware that it is a spectrum right and right. you can fall Thank anywhere you. Yeah. on the you spectrum. are the person you didn't have when you were a kid exactly to say like oh I can be both I don't have to pick yeah so you're yeah. doing the thing yeah you're doing yeah. it well thanks yeah. thanks yeah bravo to you okay and in this movie, like one of the things, though, though my character Jamie Miller does not, like, does not identify as non-binary. I feel like there is a lot of energy in her, a sort of like mixture of masculine and feminine, mm -hmm. just energies and impulses, where I felt like I could really bring who I am to this character instead of sort of feeling like right. I'm putting something else on, which. I'm an actor. I love to I put something else on. I was just going to say, right? like, it kind of like, landed in the perfect yeah. spot here. <laughs> yeah, so I, I have no problem being something like, you know, that I'm completely not, portraying something that I'm completely not. But it is also meaningful to feel like I can bring myself to a role. I love it. Lo I love that explanation. Yeah, that's a good it one. It sounds like an evolving, an ever-evolving journey. Yeah. It really is. Which, isn't that just human, mm -hmm. anyway? Exactly. Being a human. Uh, now, you grew up without a television in your family home. This was very interesting. So how do you get into acting from that point? I, I, you know, everybody's journey is different, but it wasn't like you were watching Bewitch and you're like, well, I want to, um, I want to be that I one. I want to do that. I want to be that you one. You know? Yeah, it's it's funny. I, I always want to clarify it's because I have two college professor parents. Sometimes well, people there are like, you go. were you Amish? And I'm like, <laughs> no. Was no. there running water? Yes, in your there home? was running water. We we had a radio, like you Thank know, God. Yeah, NPR was on whenever somebody was awake. Um, <laughs> pretty much, it just went on in the morning and then Is went it, off. This sounds like your house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, but it was very similarly that I that I saw. I saw theater, right? Uh, so I think that, that my first love was really theater. I remember seeing a friend in what was probably just like a community theater production of the Mikado. And I was like, oh. he's pretending to be somebody else. <gasps> and I Looks know that fun. that's what I like to do on my downtime as a like four year old is pretend to be somebody else. So like, look at the, these grown ups get to do this. That's cool, I wanna do that too. So yeah, I always say it like belies some lack of personal development that I've wanted to be an actor my entire life and here I am. And here you, you are. Know, yes, uh, still wanting to be an actor. So uh, yeah, I guess, I guess that's what it was. And, um, and so it was mostly theater for me and it wasn't until I was lucky enough to get a couple of jobs in television. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my first big TV job was Brotherhood. I was like, oh, I really like this. Yeah. Like, I really like the scale different of it. Different than theater, but. I like the spontaneity. I like that, like, this take can be yeah. different than the last ah. take, and actually it's better if it's different sure. than the last. So, yeah, that's just, that kind of made me think, oh, you know, I still love theater. Uh, I, I love to do theater, but I really like focusing on, on camera work. You ever been on radio, on NPR? I have not. Well, hello, with anyone with ears. We got to make that happen. Well, thanks. Um, now, the line here says you have an unhealthy obsession with baseball. I'm you just going to say you that. have a healthy. I'm going to go on record. We already had a fight, <clears throat> but we've made up. Oh, great. Thank you. You didn't know that, but we made up with each other. <laughs> I didn't know it was really a fight, so I'm um, glad that we've made you up. You know what? I'm pretending to be an actor. Everything is a fight with this one. Hello, women in baseball got to stick together. Humans in baseball. Now, it's the Phillies. Technically, I am supposed to have nothing but hatred for you, but I respect oh. the game. I watch. You're all Met killers. It's fine. Tell I mean, us only about this your year. I feel like the number of times that I've seen the Phillies go into the House of Horrors that is City Field for them, and just the Mets <laughs> trample all over the poor faces of the boys that I love, like my own family. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I call it an unhealthy love of baseball because I say people don't necessarily and see And you draw me. baseball. Yes, I do. I oh, love, my gosh. I love to draw baseball Stop players right. because oh, they're the most beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is Tom see? terrific. I know. I do. So my my father has a, a real ethos that... Is that Pete Alonso? It is Pete Alonso. <gasps> has a real ethos of like love of right, baseball above all. So really I do love baseball more than anything. And I feel like I can love players on a lot of different teams. So can except I. for maybe oh my the God. Yankees. Um, I and I don't love Atlanta either. Um, except I know, I mean. even Atlanta doesn't like Atlanta, so it's fine. <laughs> I feel like what? we're gonna be friends. This, great, we're I'm excited friends. about it. <laughs> I feel like I just met Marisol number two. <laughs>
congratulations on all the things. Oh, thank you. Please come back and visit. Oh my gosh, anytime. Oh, we'd and love next to have time you. you come back to the House of Horrors, aka City Field, call a sister up. I'll, you know what? I'll give you the mic. You can announce. Oh, the you players. look at that. You can call your players. That. Oh my gosh, it would be fun. Yeah. And by the way, her, the film with the man with the stings. That thing. Yeah. <laughs> It hits theaters this Friday, October 13th. Ooh, that's tomorrow. Spooky. It's Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. I love yeah. it. Alan, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me. We'll be right back.